Okay, this is the second of two videos on OneWay Nova using uh, SPSS version 25. Um, I have uh, two variables in this data set, uh, independent variable uh, instructional method um, with three levels, and then a dependent variable uh, learning, which is uh, my continuous uh, DV. So what we're going to do is uh, compare uh, the three learning groups, uh, the three uh, instructional method groups in terms of their uh, mean levels of learning. So um, there are actually two routes that you can kind of carry out a one-way ANOVA through SPSS. In uh, my earlier video, uh, I basically went through the uh, uh, compare means one-way ANOVA route. That's one way, and then so basically it's just a matter of uh, specifying the model there. Another route, uh, which um, I tend to actually utilize a little bit more often than uh, the one-way route that we just used, is just to go through general linear model, go to univariate, um, you put your independent variable into the fixed factors box, uh, your DV into the dependent variable box. Um, under options, you'll click on the usual like descriptives, effect size, power, uh, homogeneity tests. Um, you could ask for a residuals plot if you want. Um, and then uh, click on continue. Now, in previous versions of SPSS, um, uh, this other stuff, the heteroskedasticity test, and parameter estimates with robust standard errors, those were not uh, available. So this is a new looking box right here. And in fact, uh, the um, options that are under the uh, EM means uh, uh, tab right here, uh, where you could actually uh, generate estimated marginal means, that was sort of integrated with the options that you see right here. So um, it looks like they basically have broken out those two sets of options into two separate uh, boxes. So um, if you're using an older version of SPSS, it's going to look a little bit different, but uh, the information is still available. So I'm going to click on continue here and then click on EM means and um, you'll see that basically we just move uh, these over to the right to get the overall uh, grand mean and then the uh, marginal means for uh, instructional method. We'll click on continue. You have uh, the same options basically um, as through the other route with the post hoc test. So uh, we can click on um, click the uh, independent variable, move it over to the post hoc box. You have the options if you're assuming equal variances for uh, uh, obtaining uh, two keys post hoc test, or if you're assuming unequal variances uh, for the groups, then you can uh, request uh, Tamani's and Games Howell tests and our Games Howell tests. They pretty much function very similarly. So um, at any rate, uh, under plots, you can ask for, uh, you can basically move method over to the horizontal axis and uh, click on add and then continue. And um, when we click on OK, when we're looking at our output, you can see that we get our descriptive statistics right here, Levine's tests. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, other video, um, in older versions of SPSS, uh, there was only one version of Levine's test. It was based on the mean, and uh, in this new version, you actually have uh, based on the median, median with adjusted uh, degrees of freedom, trim mean, and uh, just to be consistent with uh, the previous versions, I'm just going to stick with interpreting this result right here. And uh, basically, when we're testing uh, equality of variances, we're just trying to determine if the variation in uh, scores on learning. Uh, differ significantly across the, the groups. So um, are the are variances of score differ across the groups. So um, basically if this uh, p-value right here, if this is greater than 0.05, that's actually uh, a good thing when it comes to interpreting the parametric ANOVA um, because that would signal that we have evidence uh, in favor of uh, homogeneity of variances and that's the assumption uh, that's one of the uh, assumptions with respect to analysis of variance. So uh, in this particular case, you can see this is uh, definitely greater than 0 0.05. So I'm going to go ahead and interpret uh, this as an indication that we have uh, no significant differences in the variances across groups, meaning that our assumption uh, 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 appears met. So because of that, then I'm going to go down here and now I'm going to move to test between subjects effects. And we have our independent variable right here. You can see that uh, within this box we've got our uh, sum of squares uh, due to the effect method and then sum of squares due to the error. The degrees of freedom uh, basically it's between and within right here. Uh, there's our mean square and then the F value which is formed as a ratio of the 
um, mean square uh, due to the uh, instructional method to the mean square error. And there's our significance test. So uh, you can see right here that this is indicating that we have significant differences between our uh, groups. Um, our, you know, basically, we can infer significant differences in population means. The uh, partial eta square we can use to uh, estimate um, or, or make a judgment about the magnitude of the effect. Uh, in the context of one-way ANOVA, this would be interpreted as a proportion of variance uh, or proportion of variation in learning that's accounted for by the independent variable. So the uh, independent variable is actually accounting for roughly 31.2% of the variation in uh, learning. Uh, and then obviously you have sort of the post hoc uh, power that's uh, printed out right here. So scrolling down, you can see we have the uh, estimated marginal means. There's a grand mean, the uh, means for instructional method. And then as we scroll down, you can see we have our post hoc tests. And uh, because we're assuming that we have equal variances, uh, that are equal uh, variances uh, across the groups, uh, we're not going to rely on this test or this test right here. We'll just interpret uh, two keys, uh, uh, significance, uh, honestly, significant difference tests. And uh, basically, we have group one compared with group two. There's the mean difference. Uh, basically, the mean for group one is 3.2 points lower than the mean for group two. That difference is significant. When we compare groups one versus three, you see that group one, uh, the mean is 2.2 points lower than group three. That was not significant, so there's no significant difference between one and three. And then when we compare two versus three, you can see that uh, group two, the mean for group two is one point higher than that for group three, and there's no difference uh, between those two groups. So uh, scrolling down a little bit further, you can see that we, uh, you know, we get our residuals plot. Uh, I'm not really going to spend any time on that right now, but mainly just kind of showing you here's our profile plot that we requested. And, um, and so forth. So that's basically the one-way ANOVA uh, results and then followed up by uh, Tukey's post hoc test. If you want to run uh, planned contrast um, using, um, uh, you know, as a follow-up to the ANOVA, um, there are a couple of options in SPSS. If you go to analyze, go back to uh, our main menu, there, there's a little box right here that says contrast and it actually has a number of sort of canned possible contrasts that are available to you. Uh, that's not my preference uh, to use. Um, uh, you know, some of these are, are a little bit, uh, I, don't, I guess you could say, kind of weird to use. Um, I, you know, I just don't really see a lot of need for some of these things. So, and I tend to prefer just to use the contrast coefficients. Uh, to specify my contrast up front. So I'm actually not going to use that, but the, as an alternative, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to paste, click on paste, and you can see an SPSS file, uh, basically the syntax file opens up. Uh, this is uh, reflecting all of the uh, specifications using um, our drop down menu uh, option. And what I can do is um, under uh, uh, right here what says uh, design equals method, I'm going to remove that period there, go to the next line, and I'm going to use the L matrix command to specify my contrast. So um, as I kind of talked about in my previous video, basically you can lay out your contrast in terms of um, the following way. So a contrast coefficient is just a number that is multiplied by the mean for um, your group. So if, you, if I do this for mean, there's group one multiplied by a contrast coefficient. Uh, plus the mean, uh, the contrast coefficient for two times the mean for group two, plus contrast coefficient for group three times the mean for group three. If I substitute uh, coefficient values uh, right here, then it will specify the contrast. So, for instance, if I want to compare uh, the mean for uh, method one versus the mean for method three, then I would substitute a one here and put a, a, a negative one right here and then specify this contrast coefficient uh, for zero. And what that translates into, if I take the product of uh, one and the mean for group one, that gets me uh, the mean for group one, uh, zero times um, the mean for group two is obviously zero, and negative one times the mean for group three will give me um, uh, this minus uh, group three right there. So then that's the contrast that's laid out. Um, so that's, uh, that's an example of a simple contrast. If I wanted to uh, compute 
uh, let's say the average of the means for groups one and two, uh, I could do this as well. I could just take one half for the first contrast coefficient, one half for the second one, and then a minus one for the third. The main thing is that the contrast coefficients need to be able need to sum to zero. So if I'm doing this using syntax, what I'll do is use the L matrix command. I'll type in backslash L matrix and you can see it highlights in green and then uh, I typically like to include a, uh, a, a title of sorts so I'm just going to call put this inside quotation marks I'm going to call this group one versus group three and in quotation marks and so now you can see it turns black uh, back to black and then um, go to the next line and now I'll type in the name of my independent variable the name of the independent variable in this analysis is method so I'm going to type in method and then follow it up with my contrast coefficients of one space zero space negative one and there you go and let's say I want to do the second one where I'm going to use uh, the average of the means for groups one and two versus three so I'll type in backslash L matrix uh, I'll go ahead and put in another title I'll just say groups uh, groups uh, one and two uh, versus group three and uh, in quotation marks and then I'll say method and then uh, co contrast coefficients of one half one half and negative one follow this up with a period so notice right now it says uh, the uh, Unianova up here uh, is in red if I follow it up with a period you'll see it turns blue and that's going to signal that we've closed out everything so now when I highlight all of this and uh, press the uh, green button then you can see that we get the same descriptives, Levine's tests, tests of between subjects and effects as before. But when you scroll down, you'll see a little box that says custom hypothesis tests. Um, it's actually got the, you know, this is the first contrast, the second one, it's got the titles. And then you can see for the first uh, custom hypothesis test, the difference between the two uh, groups, one and uh, three, that's the mean difference. This is the P value. Um, if I wanted the uh, T value, uh, for the test, then basically I can just take the uh, contrast estimate and divide it by the standard error, and that will give me the T value. Or uh, option B is just to uh, go down here to this test results and just take the square root of F, and your degrees of freedom for that T test is going to be this right here. So um, if we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have our complex contrast involving uh, the, the average of the means for groups one and two versus three. So there's our contrast estimate. Uh, significance level. As I said before, if you wanted the actual T value, just take the estimate uh, and divide by the uh, standard error uh, for the estimate, and that will give you the T value. Or another way of doing it again is just to take the square root of the F to get the uh, the T value.